Start in the day, yay! We had to start our way. Hi, Instagram! <laughs> I'm here! Woo! We're going to have a professional life. Yeah. <laughs> Hello! Welcome to our podcast. Episode 20 of our Coaching Mindset podcast. Did I say that the last day? Do I don't know. Uh, this and one, we're going to talk about what we've been up to and breathing, I think, was our focus. Because I did a video about breathing, yes. Journey. Yeah, it was yesterday. It was cool. Yeah, so, um, well, well, I suppose, well, you start. What have you been at this week? I've been doing many things in my new core top that Gary got me. I don't know if you know this, but it's got my name on it. It's from MFC. Right. MFC Sports. Heard of him, because he's only. <laughs> um, at the weekend that I was helping out at the Explorer 54 run, who was organised by Shane Mull, who was doing a podcast with us. A few weeks back, I don't know how long ago, but a few weeks back. Uh, the run was great. I didn't run at all, like at all. Even when we were marking out the course and everybody was running like all around, darting, I was just walking, said don't do running. And it was down at Barnes Court, and I did tell him that I think the next one's on the 20th of May, I think. He should promote it just to people like me that would like to go and see Barnes Court, because it's not normally open. Yeah, all right. And it's amazing. Is it? People like, that's amazing. Like, people live there. It's just a massive mansion of a place. Like and then it's got lakes and wee foresty bits and all. I walked around for an hour when I went off running in to do an actual test of the course. I just wandered about by myself for an hour. You can't really get lost, you just follow the water. And even if you are lost, there's water, if you can just drink it, you'll not die. But I think I think that's where he was he should promote that to people just to want to go and walk about, so enter the next one, walk about barns. Walk about barns. You could call it that could be an event. You could you could <laughs> run a separate event. The walk about snore fifty four. Or if you couldn't be arsed, <laughs> you could walk about Barnes Court with the only. I know when I'm going bad, like I said, people would want to walk around with me. Yeah, uh, you don't want like that. You're like, I like to be in nature on my own. I'm liable to get naked and I don't think it's frowned upon around people. Uh, the naked Barnes Court walk around. Yeah. yeah that's the one. One, one can sign up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I did that at the weekend. It was very good. Uh, then last night I went to Infinity War. But that's all I'm going to say about that, except it's awesome, you should go. And the new cinema, I went to the new, new cinema, not the new, old cinema, the new, new cinema. In Oma. In Oma. Uh, for people outside like Oma, we have two of everything. No bowl and alley, that everyone seems to be up in arms about. Up in arms. Hey! But we've got two people cinemas. Are, people are thinking about going on strike for that cinema. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I'm on a roll! <laughs> I think we should split. Ah, yeah, yeah. Because... <laughs> <clears throat> go ahead. No, we've got a max... Maybe called an IMAX or something. But yeah. a big massive screen, like it was an unreal screen. But I just don't know, I would like anyone that's made it that or works in the cinema, people are like, why is there a front row? Like you're not gonna sit there. Like you would literally have to look and like you're not gonna But have they not got like the screen angled a little bit? I would you still just wouldn't work. Anybody sat in the front row in a cinema, let us know. Yeah. There are loads of ones probably sat in the back row. Yeah, you're angry, you get those you know, Here you are. Smooching in the background. <laughs> uh, also, I, I would like to know, does anybody else do the Sheldon, where they go around like testing to see where they're going to sit? G, row G in Oma. In Oma's new new, it's good. G. Did you do it? Yeah, but not the things I didn't need it, because I've done it before, so I now I know. You really did it, didn't you? You have to. Ack. But in there, they've got the... Like the proper moving, they had a real name for it, but it was like the proper moving sound. So like when things move around on the screen, they surround. Like, yeah. No, <laughs> surround is all yeah, all yeah. time. It's like movable sign. Individual surround, oh, like yeah. a wee man I don't walking mean, yeah. with the with the sound, with a speaker. Uh, so that's what I did. Infinity War, do it. Everyone do it. I'm gonna do it again at least twice. Nice. Well, I must go too. I was. I'll take George out too, because that's what we'll. I think this week we talked about, and I wrote a wrote about it too in, in, in my article on the Herald. You have an article? Yeah, I have an article on the Herald, did I mention that? Oh, that's so a really local newspaper, isn't it? Yes, yeah, a local newspaper. The Ulster Herald. To give him another shout out. Martin Kelly. Oh, Martin, Martin Kelly. Kelly. Martin, Martin, Martin Kelly, Kelly. 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 Um, I seen that mark uh, in the town. It was cool, I actually went into the town. I have been in the town a long time and I was Bart. doing these bits and bobs. Um, but it was, actually, it was actually great to go in and the amount of people you actually met. Met a guy, he's traffic warden now, so shout out to Ginger, my, my fellow ginger friend, um, who was actually in America and he's home and we had a good catch up and 
Bob and Mark and just actually met a few other people and just I had a bit of time and it was actually nice to just go around and say hello. So if you get a bit of time to do that. Um, so a lot of people we constantly uh, talk about that reaching out. I went to Asda shopping. Shout out to Asda shopping. I hear Asda shopping. Oh. But I went for a, last week for five minutes and it took me just over an hour because I went at the wrong time just keep meeting people and then chatting about life. Like chatting about like new core top. How are they? And I said, what? <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, funny, I was actually in Asda on, I went, I went on Sunday during the day. It's came kind of we were playing football um, on Sunday night. Did you um, play well with a couple of Google? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know this. Probably the worst performance, personally by myself, um, uh -oh. for a very long time. But um, I think, well, we get into detail, you were so far as a team, we kind of responded well. Shout out to, to T Mac whenever we talked about setbacks and yeah. how we deal with them. Now, obviously, so far we think we've we've done all right, but the proof is we have no no proof of it yet. So, I can prove it. Prove it by winning on something. Get yeah. back on there. Go team. Go team. Shout out to the Blues. <laughs> Liam's not a football man. He's not a blue, though. Yeah, Very blue, yes. anyway. Call the Blues. <laughs> So yeah, so um, I I think to be honest, if I if I do reflect, as I see one of the team, I think it was Tiernan, come up to me. Tiernan is also Team Mac. Team Mac is Tiernan, yeah, Tiernan Team Mac. Tiernan was the guy with the glorious hair. Yeah. In the podcast. Nice. Sweet man. And beard. And a beat off. Yeah. Very handsome. Very handsome. Shout out to the Longsdale. Longsdale. Longsdale, you're back on. <laughs> Normally, they're from wear shoes. It's coincidental. Um. But yeah, he was kind of like, oh, I just kind of noticed your body language wasn't, um, kind of like, and as I mentioned last week, I was probably struggling a bit to get back into motivation, coming down from the holidays and different things, and obviously it did have an effect on my performance, and it wasn't probably until Monday, Tuesday this week, work-wise anyway, that I've actually now got the focus back on, good. which is good, but and I think it's just another point too, is, you know, if you do go we talked about this last week out of your routine, you know, keep at it, it will come. And I feel like I've been a lot more productive to this week, a lot more productive and feeling good and more positive as such. So that's always a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> always a good sign. Um probably helped as well too. I was texting you. We on Friday I collected Josh and I actually just went straight up to like Rosnaila in Donegal. Yeah. And the thing I love about it the best is we literally land and you can just throw your phone to the side or um, even if it's with you because you have to do the odd Instagram post obviously. Oh. <laughs> Oz. But I flick off the shoes and just that's me, bare feet more or less the whole time. It's just walk around bare feet. Even if it's raining now, you don't mind because you're, you're in, and out of the, in and out of the mobile, you're walking down to the beach, it's all kind of grass and any one you do walk in the tarmac, it's quite good for the feet. I think yeah. in general you should... But well, that's what I'm saying. Surprisingly, I normally don't have my shoes yeah, on this long. So, uh, just knew you were going to bring up the long steels. <laughs> uh, even on the long steels, I wear long steels because they're so thin that it's almost like I'm walking flat on my feet anyway. So, uh, well, they were they used to be white shoes, used to be like twelve pound. Now they're up to like eight. You think pounds. what? I don't know. <laughs> I it's like two seven tickets. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's probably another area we could kind of look at. I would always train to the long steels. <laughs> I would always train in, in my bare feet. Um, and I always do the, the mild fascia release with, with the, the ball. More or less, put a ball on the ground. Hard enough one that you, know, you get a slither, a hockey ball, preferably not a tennis ball because it's too soft, and just roll. Um, a good one I see to do is I see me when you're brushing your teeth. So if you have a ball just handy in your, in your toilet, hygienic ways, may not work. Your bathroom, but don't eat the thing. <laughs> don't eat it, don't eat it. Don't put it on your foot and just roll. And it's actually quite, actually quite good um, for releasing all the muscles in the foot. And uh, I'm not a reflexologist, my sister is. Um, but She's if, a right person, you know. It's probably it, like, but it's probably one of the most important areas that is neglected by people and suffocated by people because, yeah. especially ladies, you know, in your high heels and crunching up your feet and trying to squeeze in the stuff and you're elevating your calves. So take care of your feet. They're really, really important. I'm going to add that... that I agree with that. I would still say tennis balls. I work with kinesiology. I work with a lot of people that are older and have a lot of sore feet. People that spend their day in like chapter traffic warden guy. Yeah, yeah, that's why they're called flat feet because they walk so much. 
a tennis ball can be enough because it manipulates and it'll move with you so it's not going to put too much pressure on to start with i would ideally get you to move into a harder one eventually uh but also just you can do it with half a bottle of water yeah you can just half drink throw it in the ground that's noisy and annoying like, but i would tell people to have it in their living room when they're watching tv so they can just roll roll their feet and my explanation is that if you have tight hips or knees or ankles rather than trying to loosen the hip and then work on the knee and then work on the ankle if you force the blood to get to the feet so stimulating the, the feet this is obviously my hand but feet for this analogy if you stimulate the blood flow to the feet then it has to travel through the hip through the knee through the ankle right down to the toe so if you're doing that then it's helping everything in general plus you can't manipulate your feet and not at least tendon to move the rest of the, the body so that would be my add-on to I'm not a reflexologist either, but I'm a kinesiologist, and they both have ologists at the end. <laughs> so you're bound to know something. Right. And I mean, it's, it's like one of those things, as long as you know a little bit that it's helping, don't get obsessed with it, but roll the feet. And actually, whenever you do it for the first time, you'll realise how neglected your feet are, because you will feel that, that pain, or even if you haven't done it for a while. I would always take uh, a small bottle and have it in the gym. So even when I'm in the gym to start off, I'd always do that and then move on to foam rolling, uh, maybe a bit of band work or definitely some mobility and movement and then always train on my bare feet. It's good because obviously the science behind it is, as, as Liam says too, um, if you're on shoes or if you're not wearing your Lonsdales, you're kind of on a high enough platform and if they're like, she's like these, <laughs> they've got the soft foam at the bottom. And they said, no, see Paul Pogba and Zlatny Marimovic. That's football again. Whoa, whoa, but they, whoa, whoa. they were they were shouting each other for kicking. That's another story. Kicking too high. Kicking, kicking very high. But they were trying to mock each other. We do not talk about this. You do not know what this is like. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, but what I noticed, especially with taking kids, if you get them to the tree and, and their bare feet, because what you'll find is if if they're doing a squat, they're you might they might look like they're squatting quite well, but if you look, their ankles have collapsed in or their knees are starting to cave in, but they're being supported by this foam, and yeah. it's kind of squeezing them down a wee bit. So when you get off your bare feet, you're connected to the ground, you, know, you have more stimulus running through the feet, and it's just, you can, it's that whole connection right yeah. through the chain. Um, you'll definitely feel it when you're deadlifting and squatting too, it's quite good. Just in general life, if you think of it from a spiritual perspective, they always talk about you planting your feet and getting grounded, being in touch with nature. I think they get a wee bit too spiritual and they get people get lost in the spiritual side of it but the science of it is still good like get get connected feel it like everyone does it they go to the beach they take their shoes and socks off and walk in the sand like why do you do that because it feels like you don't want sand in your shoes and socks like, <laughs> for, <laughs> for a fair enough reason uh, you always end up with it anyway when you go back to the car except if you have a wee bottle of water and you don't think you're going to clean it but uh, just doing that connection to the to the ground but the stimulus that you're getting through mobilizing your feet throughout your whole body and just gives you a better platform to check to see where you're tight and where you're not tight things like how do we get on the feet and always just kind of letting our our way we can so right, we'll rub your feet rub your feet but even at that i do do that a lot like i sit after i massage someone whenever i was sitting on the bed i end up manipulating my foot that's not just what I tell people to do a lot. You know the toe separator things? You know, whenever you paint your yeah. nails? You're very quick. <laughs> say, yes, I, sorry, what? <laughs> you're very quick. But yes, I, I have four <laughs> bears. Uh, if, if you don't do it, if you don't look at your feet, a lot of people's feet, their toes cross over each other. Like your feet should. Yeah. Like imagine if your hand did that, you would be thinking, I'm not right with my hand here. So a lot of people's feet do that. So a, a deadly way to start fixing it is wear them toe separators. Try to wear them for 15 minutes, like put them on when you go to sleep. There's a good chance to wake up with a cramp within five minutes, then just take them off. But over time, they'll help separate and strengthen the, the foot. Like we talked about this before, my feet are one size bigger than they were when I was at school because I started training after I left school. Like I didn't do PE or anything in school, so I did no exercise. And then since I started training on my feet, they just have got broader, they're not longer, but they're, they're broader. So using them, that's a, a easy cheat. Like there's no effort to stick on. Then we use toe set. Yeah. We don't know. Toes set. Toes I was actually listening to another podcast. Anita Hartman. I'm going to go with. 
try it out anyway. Try to need a heart man movement or feet. But what she designed, um, it was on Strength Coach podcast with Mike Boyle, and she came out and took a lot of seminars. A follower, she's quite good. Um, she designed a mat of stones. So she glues her own mat and she has them at her sink and she has them in her shower. And it's an uneven surface. I think she was on Tim Ferriss as well. She might be. Uh, she might be. So she does that now. So she stands on that and it, it gains stimulus. But it only triggered trigger me is that she finds that everybody that comes to her, you know, with back, knee problems, everything, she solves all of it through the feet. Oh, but the only issue is that they always have to throw out their, their shoe wardrobe because they always go up with a foot size. Yeah. You know, but they're just a lot stronger and it's it's an area don't neglect, don't neglect the feet. It's a good idea too to look if you don't know what your feet are doing. Uh, ben Cornell, the Sherlock Holmes guy, he, whenever he was teaching me to keep an eye on people, it was one of the things to do was look at the soles of their feet and see where the shoe was wearing. And that'll give you a good idea of what they do for a living or, or what sport they play or things like that. But if you take all that away and just look at your own shoes and see where you're wearing, you might notice that you're wearing the inside and that on the outside there. So you're walking weird or you might discover you're yeah. walking inside or outside or upward out or whatever. So check your feet. The other one, well, whenever the flares were out, the salt skin tight now was flares. You used to remember, you, it happened to me as well. I, it's a kind of first time I noticed it was one pot bottom of my jean was a wee bit... Uh, but not the shampoo cut, but to be like, what, what were you saying? The shovel. The shovel, yeah, we'll go with that. The shovel. And then you could notice, because that's what I used to shift a lot of my weight to one side because of, of my back, and you could actually see it from, from my jeans, so I was just catching on so the So we're right. saving wardrobes as well. So we're saving wardrobes, you know this what? Is fashion, we should call it. <laughs> fashion. <laughs> the core yeah. cops and all that. Like. So, um, but yeah, so what do we... <laughs> breathe, so breathe. <laughs> I said, forget about the rest of the week and everything went on, it was all good. Um, so breathing. So I kind of was talking to Liam about this because I watched his video. If you go onto Liam's Instagram and Facebook page, he talks about Jihong, 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 uh, and breathing. As it's very fascinating, nicely, um, good talk. So if you can listen to Liam for 25 minutes, you can listen to that one. I think it was like a 10 minute video. Yeah. That was, so... It was, uh, it was kind of a selling video though, just so people were, I'm not trying to sell now, but on, and that video was because a lot of people talk to me, I've got a couple of online courses and one of them is a Jigong course. So what I've done with, with Jigong is basically breathing exercises that back in the ages ago, whenever it was, I can't remember the exact date, but in the Shaolin Temple, uh, I think you're going to be doing like uh, like last year, all right, Tuesday <laughs> week. <laughs> No, I, I'm going to go right back to where it came from. So the Shaolin Temple is where uh, the martial art that I studied came from. And a lot of people think it's the originator of martial arts. They're wrong, but it's nice for them to think that. And a lot of Kung Fu movies will teach you that, but it's also lies. And the more you look into it, it's, it comes from India. But that's lies. We're not getting into that. No, I can see the rings just <laughs> built in there. No, the way, we just had this talk a lot of times. But the, the myth of it is that uh, a prince called Tatmo landed and he wanted to be a monk. I noticed the monks were lazy, they couldn't meditate, they couldn't sit. So he went away and meditated for nine years. The story gets mental, like he cut his eyelids off and threw them out of the cave and they became green tea. So that's where your green tea comes from, according to the Marshall Art myth. Uh, I, see, I had a cup there, but that's what's actually over there. We don't have anything we normally have. I do. You never drink your water, that's why you don't put it out anymore. You give me water. Um, so the exercises are designed to focus mobility and strength so they're just basic stuff like lifting your arms but in time with your breathing so you're not just sitting unless you're you're tying it with a breathing can you do about now i could do well everyone could do that well no one's you can do it seated standing someone takes it to seated so the easiest way to do it is one of the ones that i teach in my class is you bring your arms out to the side as you breathe in you rotate at the shoulder so you're getting a full rotation of the shoulder and breathe out as your palms face you and the, you pull them back down to the body so that, going over your eyes as well, helps to defocus your eyes. Defocusing your eyes is a way of relaxing. A lot of people are, are, are looking about them, especially in the class. So whenever you do something like this, it defocuses you for a second and makes you uh, internally focus. So you're doing that. It's like all of the mobility movements and everything that people teach. It's all old. It's not like you can only move in 10 directions. That's, that's it. Like there's no magic. It's a good point. Yeah, but well, most people forget. They think that this... This new mobility technique is the amazing thing, but it's only one of ten directions. 
the directions of the compass and then up and down. That, that's it. We can't. That's it. We can't go anywhere. People are just like starting to combine them and think, "Wow, uh, this is ingenious." All right. It's like whenever I was teaching and, and you teach this move. This is a, a double outer block, and then people would say. But sure, why would you ever do that? What if someone throws one punch and you do this? It makes no sense. And you're going, well, you just block the one punch. But you're practicing practicing the movements. So the movements, same as the Qigong, the movements are like your dictionary. So then you so you learn this is double blocks in the dictionary, but you don't use the whole dictionary to write a sentence. You pick words from the dictionary to, to add to the sentence. So what I've done is combine my 20 odd years of martial arts with about 14 years of kinesiology and how the body works to create, um, I'm not going to say better, but I'm going to say better so much this time, you don't say better. Uh, movements that. Yours. Yeah, your own. Movements that are designed to affect the body in a better way. The way, the way I described it in the video was a car, so we'll give a different analogy, like flying a plane. The mechanics of flying a plane is still back when the Wright brothers made a plane. But if you were given the choice to fly one of the airplanes to America or fly in a first class, specially designed, you would pick the first you class. You would all be over there. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> You'd definitely go first class. This one would still work, but it's gonna. It's not going to be as comfortable. It's not going to be as effective. It's not going to be as fast. So you take your shoes off. <laughs> in this day and age, we, we don't have time. So people don't have time to sit. Like whenever I started this, you had to do, like it would have been about an hour and a half. Of breathing exercises to get the benefit. Now, like this is a twenty-minute workout, and, and you'll feel it. And I've tested it on my my clients, but I also tested it with a few people that don't do any breathing work. Like I made sure, like when you train, do you ever focus on your breathing? No, I just turned it up the thing. I'm like go and do this for five days and come back to me. And they notice that their the cardio is better, their lifts are better. The re recovery time is the main thing. A lot of people think you have to be very cardiovascularly fit to recover. Yes, that really helps, but if you can control your breathing and get better oxygen into the body, then you will recover faster. So that's what I'm noticing from it. So I think, it, like breathing, you know, we all breathe, and that's one of the running jokes that every audience I ever talk to says, oh, I'm breathing right now. I'm like, are you on, on breathing? <laughs> oh, I can hear so hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see you that. <laughs> that was going to do a forced joke. Um, but whenever, whenever, you, whenever you focus on, on your breathing, you can develop your recovery faster because not because you're trying to just not die you actually know what you're doing where this is where visualization comes in where it's more important like i visualize taking taking energy out of the ground out of the sky and bring it into my body i'm not a very spiritual person i don't go too crazy into spirituality but i like the visualization of that and i like to be thinking like i'm sucking in that oxygen and, and why am i taking more oxygen because it makes me makes me stronger it keeps me alive it makes me fitter so the more oxygen I can get, the stronger, fitter, more alive I'll feel. So, for example, if people go for a walk, I would always suggest when you get to a tree, take acknowledgement of the tree and take a deep breath in and imagine, because a tree is releasing oxygen, so imagine that you're taking on really fresh, mm -hmm. new oxygen, and then walk on so you feel better all the time. So then you can recover faster, you can develop your your exercise better. So I'm going to give a shout-out to Ian, actually, now whenever I think about it. And he started working with me less. Ian Roland. Ian Roland. Uh, yeah, how are you? He ran, ran, hopefully someday will. <laughs> he ran 10k today, which is massive for him. When, if you look at it, like 10, 10k is an amazing run. And I did it, I thought it was a good time. He did it in about an hour 11. I don't know if he's happy with me sharing time, but too late, it's late again. <laughs> um, but like he did that, and, and literally the first day he ran, like we laughed on the phone. But how stupid it was for him to run like he was like this is ridiculous i, I don't run I, I can't do it and i'm going we'll just try to get to here and then tomorrow try to get slightly further than there or try to get to the same spot and don't feel and see if you don't feel as tired but when we started to get into the breathing and the focus and his visualization was already brilliant anyway and his focus was already good but whenever we a lot of people separate their exercise from what they already know so yeah i'm very good at focus and meditating and then I exercise like a mentor and like don't use any of that, then that just makes no sense to me. So you start to incorporate both. So when he did that, his improvements just like went through the roof. And then initially it was he wanted to do it by the end of this year. He wanted to do it with the 10 game at the end of this year. And now you want, we're not even in May. Good. So now he needs to do like a hundred <laughs> or something. I think that's the big thing you always, the key word in that is the focus. 
Yeah. You know, and that's that's the thing with the people breathing, meditating, whatever whatever you want to call it, but you know, it's not to clear the mind because you physically if if you clear your mind, then you've probably been meditating for nine years with your eyelids cut off, you know, you're right. you're enlightened. You'll never clear your mind, but if you can try and focus more on the things that you want to do, I think it's a valid point. Probably something we could use a lot even in sport. Um I was reading a few things as well too that a lot of people say, well, actually, it's okay to actually go over in your hands and knees because when we were designed, we were actually hunched over. Now, the re- now this is a theory. The theory <laughs> is that um, this is nuts. <laughs> the reason we, we actually stood up and came was for survival. I was reading it was born to run. And they were, one of the theories was that if they were chasing their their prey or their, their dinner, they could never outrun it with speed. So they couldn't. So what they did, they hunted it down with endurance. So what happened was, say, for example, they're chasing a deer or a young antelope or whatever, they would run after it. The antelope would take well in front, but then it would start to suffer. And because it couldn't stand up and expa- expand then maybe with air, or because it was hunched over, it couldn't get the oxygen in, then it would sit down for a while, recover it, then you come, and then it would go, but wouldn't go as far, and continue and continue. Yeah. So... But probably what I, what I'm getting to is the fact a that metaphor for goals in general. Yeah. Just keep going, like you'll and get you closer to it, and then and then eventually you'll get there. Stuff. Yeah. Um, but I think it, it can kind of can context to keep up what I was saying there. <laughs> Doesn't it? Does a wee bit, but um, the fact is that maybe when we do get out of breath, you know, we'll go, oh, I need to stop. I need to stop. Oh, I need to stop. Oh, I need to focus. Yeah. I need to focus on your breathing. Um, I actually did it this morning in, in the class is we f- did a did a, an awesome finisher you might not have done awesome <laughs> but again a good strength session and then at the end we just did a finisher and we just finished and they were boom gone and you could just hear heavy breathing everywhere so I just changed the music first of all into like uh, yoga I think it was a Alexis French check him out the piano player mm, awesome good cool. so I put him on and literally just Change my tone of voice and go, okay, now we're just going to concentrate on your breathing. That's all I want you to do. And then I got them put their hand on their heart and around their chest and just say, right now, control that. Control the beating of the heart. And again, focus. And when we went in and finally got their eyes closed, he just said, look, if anything comes into the mind, acknowledge it, but then just go back to the breath. Yeah. And then that's when you can start to focus. Now you... If you're playing sport, it's quite hard to do that. <laughs> but but that's if why you are training. It's why you practice it in training, the same as anything. Yeah. Like you don't deadlift in the middle of a football field, I would imagine, but you still use all that all the tools to point from that. So whenever you same as when we're working with anxiety, panic, phobias, anything like that, you teach the breathing and you tell them practice the breathing when you do not need it. So when you are breaking out, you're not thinking, right, how do I, how is that breathing? you're panicking about whatever's happening, plus panicking about the breathing. And, and plus trying to like settle yourself it's not going to do it whereas if you have the tools where it's easy where you can go right in panic and what do I need to do I need to breathe into it right poof, there we go switch on the breathing relax what else do I need I need to focus take the focus too then then you have all them on your wee toolbox that I've just created that's nice to know. <laughs> but you, whenever you have them you're able to tune into them so it's the same as you playing on the pitch you know like right we're going we're going down whatever and you know right we need to get the ball from there to there you know Jimmy's the fastest and everyone's like get like the water boy get the ball to the water boy he'll bring it to the end zone like that's well like you know that's your tool that he's just Bobby Boucher it's good I know about water boy football no but he tackled everyone he didn't run I was tired at the end he did yeah uh, yeah well then Forrest Gump Forrest Gump yeah, that was one of the best scenes in the movie this is totally awesome I didn't put Peter Boy sitting there the guy that doesn't speak. Ah, so, uh, yeah. So I think from deep country. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm going to run deep. That's kind of visualisation. That's what you see. You have that in your, your tool bag. It just works yeah. forever. But the point is that you, you can use these things because you've trained with them. You know exactly what tool to use, when to use it. You know what, like, as a coach, you know what to say to who to make them be able to lift more, to make them relax, to make them be able to run better because you, you work with them and you understand them. So whenever you do that, I just sort of think that you're distracted in my own head. The because we randomly talked about Bobby Boucher and Forrest Gump. There was a wee meme on Facebook the other day that was like if you got Bobby Boucher and Forrest Gump and Forrest wanted to go home and Bobby thought Forrest had said something about his man who would win. 
there's a week. Nee. Fijn hoor. Ik ga hem even lopen. Ik ben even die stil laten lezen. Ik ga hem even lopen. Hope you are enjoying it. Thanks very much. What were we on about? Oh, yeah. So, when you practice the breathing, when you don't need it, it's much easier to tune in. So, when you do, it's why, for example, people go to breathing classes before they have a baby. They don't just land in labour and they're like, oh, hey, there's a good breathing. <laughs> Stop whinging. There's no breathing tool. If you do this, yeah. it'll solve the problem. Like, if they don't do that, they teach them for weeks because you're yeah. just not going to learn that in that environment. Um, so, breathing is really important. Yeah, really, really important. I could, another another <laughs> thing on the breathing to go. Uh, we we can't talked about this a little bit before, but why the numbers or what are the what's the significance of a number? Yeah, so yeah, people yeah. are going, oh my god, I seen it was four six eight, or is it you know three five two, or I see people exhaling like really quick. Do you want to explain the, or talk about the that? The numbers is, is mainly the, the start is a focus. If you just say to someone, just focus on breathing in and out, it's a small thing to think of they breathe in and they breathe in, and then they breathe out. And then they wander, and then they'll come back, and they forget. So when you're saying, like you, like the one I teach in my book is three, five, seven. So you breathe in for three, hold for five, out for seven. You have to focus on that. But if you were to get my meditation course, I do that in my meditation, but halfway through, I just change it. I say, we're going to do five sets of three, five, seven, so everybody's psyched and they're ready. And they're focusing on, I know they're doing this, the first time they've ever done so they're focusing on getting it correct. And that, so they're not focusing on relaxing, it's being correct. So then I just randomly change it, so I'll say, and I was counting in, two, three, hold, four, five, six. And then I start changing my numbers. So then you, can't, then you can't keep track of what the fuck I'm saying, you just want to relax. So whenever you're doing that, you're able to switch people off that way, so you're focusing on the breathing. If I do fire breathing, which looks about odd, you're breathing normally through your nose, you're moving your stomach in and out at the same time, you're breathing like this, it's to re-energize, to get, to get very the, weird looking, but I've seen him doing it, I've seen it a lot, time. it's not as bad as the panting breath that you, a lot of you do in yoga, for, so we'll talk about fire breathing first, so fire breathing, you're, first of all, you're massaging your core from the inside out, so you're strengthening the core, you're, it's forcing you to pull and push your diaphragm. So you're dropping it and pulling it at the same time. So this is like a central nervous kickstarter. So it's yeah. getting you started. So instead of trying to relax, that's to get you to get you started. But you can do it slower and more forcefully. And that's again to relax you. So it depends on what, it comes back to visualization. Your visualization of what you want to achieve from your breathing is what's going to get it first. The, the way that sets you up so I you, you would hear me if you can hear me in the gym lucky in most gyms I hate it but they have really loud music so I'd be breathing mental sometimes like a lot of people do as well when they train they do breathe in breathe out on effort and that's just the steadfast rule that's how you do it but you need to be able to do other you need to be able to breathe out on effort in on effort you need to be able to have no air in your system full lung of air in your system like you know you need to be able to do all of them so if you practice the fire breathing, it's a good way for stimulating the blood into the, the gut. And I always think that your stomach's your second brain. If you think about it, you never have anyone that's mentally fatigued or stressed that doesn't feel slightly sick. And you don't have anyone that feels sick that isn't mentally drained or fatigued. So they're very closely connected. Uh, panting breath is designed to release toxins. So you can try it. It's, you only think the other one looks weird. This one looks weirder. You place your tongue as far out as you possibly can, and you breathe like this. So it's called panting breathing. So if you do that, you just get their last one of the night, you know. <laughs> Bye. If you do that, you will notice a metallic taste in your mouth after about thirty six. If you can survive thirty six, so let us know if you can, because generally you start to feel like you want to throw up a wee bit because it's. Because you're forcing out the breath and you're sticking your tongue out. But then you'll taste metallic. The more metallic you taste, the more metallic th there is in the body, which would be like from fumes and all from cars yeah. and, all, and, all, and the food and all the stuff that we eat. Um, so that's a good way of getting rid of that. So that's the one time I would suggest that people are allowed to spit whenever they do training. There's no other reason for spitting ever. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, not, not. Just, like, when we, we were always taught when we learned Qigong, 
and Tai Chi and anything energy related was to never spit. Like you never spat ever. Like you're that's part of your energy that's going. So I nearly got into something mental there, but not. Uh, uh, See you next <laughs> week. <laughs> so so it's a um whenever you're doing that you're you're allowed to because you're cre- you're bringing the metallic stuff that your body doesn't need to the to the mouth so you can spit it out. I don't know if it's scientifically proven or not. I've never looked it up. I just know that when I do it, it tastes metallic so I spit it out. There you go. So I'm going to do my cup. Three, three different six. breaths. Right? Three, three different, different breaths. breaths. But, uh, yeah, because I remember always reading too about breathing in and then, especially if you're tired, to you know breathe out as quickly as you can. Right. And again, we talk about focus, but people think, oh, I have to focus to try and calm down. But you also you need to focus to give yourself that kickstart. So if you wake up in the morning, and you're still feeling a bit tired, you have that breathing in, hold, and then, and maybe yeah. as, that, as if that focus and visualization, say, right, as soon as I breathe out here, you know what? That's not even a, a breathe out and drop a shoulder, it's a chest up, yeah. I'm ready to go. You're trying to expel the air, like shoot it, you're not trying to blow up, you're not breathing in and then, and trying to blow up a balloon, you're trying to get rid of all the air that you would blow a balloon up with in one movement. So when you breathe in, your your chest lifts, and when you breathe out, so it's a a shot of a shot of air. Once you do that, you're again stimulating the whole body, and it just wakes you up because you're reoxygenating the blood faster than whenever you were lying asleep in a room. That's a perfect one to visualization to say you know it's all this tired energy is in your body. Mm. And you just want to get it out, yeah. You know, and the thing, the thing with this is, guys, you don't have to go out. You don't have to preach all this, and you don't have to do. We're, we're you know, we're just saying, I'm, I'm probably only kind of really getting into it now, but do find the benefits. And also, I'll be honest, there's days where it doesn't work. You know, I might be meditating, I might be on my breathing, and I cannot get any focus whatsoever. The head's just going everywhere. Yeah. But. You find that obviously maybe when you stop for once or twice, or you're just you're just in a bad mood, or so, it will happen. But that's when your practice comes, and eventually, hopefully, I get to a stage where it no matter how much of a bad mood or how how anything's went for the day, that I could just go. Well, you know what? This is now my time. Which yeah. you're kind of at a place now where you can do that. I'm sure you have times where your meditation is a lot better. If you, whenever, whenever you're saying there, if you're in a bad mood or angry or anything and you sit down to meditate, it's really hard to meditate when you're angry or in a foul mood or you're just feeling down. But still taking that time for yourself is always going to be beneficial. But a good back to visualization, a good thing to do is so you sit down and you do a couple of breaths, you'll even if you're angry, you'll still be thinking to yourself, shut up, then this is a waste of and you'll move like you'll, you'll be you'll find your you normally when people are in a foul mood and they try to meditate, they're more itchy. Because right, like they move and, and they have to touch them, their eyes and their face and everything. Nothing feels comfortable. So what you would do is visualize a room and visualize that version of you, the one that's angry in that room. What do they look like? Do they look like you? Do they look bigger than you? What do they look like? And then visualize a happy version of yourself coming in and doing something to make them happy. Or imagine if you don't want to do that, you can't you can't get a happy version of you because you're so low. Imagine yourself sitting with a group of friends and then telling one of them stories that they tell where everyone laughs. Or imagine your favourite movie, The Water Boy, coming on and you're <laughs> watching The Water Boy and laughing. The goal is just to get a laugh like that. It's not to get a big like yeah. belly laugh. It's just to get a, a smirk, a, sm- a smile in that face. Yeah, something yeah. that's a switch. And once you can get that switch, then you can focus on that. Or you could paint their face, or you could have your children come in and do their makeup, or you'd wear your toe spreaders from earlier <laughs> and paint your toes. You know, but yeah. you're still doing it. Instead of just sitting and going, well, my timer's off for five minutes, so let's wait. You, you start to think about how you feel and how you would like to feel. That, again, it's a question we've talked about this a lot. It's a question I ask a lot. How do you feel? Oh, I feel shit. Well, how would you like to feel? I don't know. Then how are you really going to get there? You're going to where we're going to go. We're going to get there. So it might be not shit. It's a good start. How do you feel? Shit. How would you like to feel? Not shit. So how does shit feel? It feels dark, I feel tired, I feel this, I feel that, I feel that. So then not shit must be like not tired, light. Like you're just yeah. using the reverse word. So then, then even talking to yourself that way, you can use that even if you're in a foul mood, you can still use it. You can visualize what you look like. And it is a good thing as well because when you visualize the angry version of yourself, that's the version you're portraying to the world. So then you can go, 
that's what my mum had to look at today, or that's what my wife had to look at, or my husband, or my chill, like your children coming home from school going, hurry, I caught a newt, or whatever kids do in school. It's like Matilda one there. It's a fog, it's a fog. <laughs> no, it's a newt. <laughs> so, they, so they come in, they, and they're all excited about this newt, which normally you think is, you don't care. Maybe if they came in with a newt, you'd be impressed, because do we even have newts over here? Don't know. But keep going, you're going somewhere <laughs> with this. <laughs> yeah, like you <laughs> So they come in, and then you just be like, oh, move, I'm dealing with someone, and you're like reading the paper, or doing something that, that could be done later on, and then that just knocks the kids. So then the next day they find a nuke, they don't care. Then they find a scratch card with £100,000 on it, <laughs> tell you because they think, God, Daddy doesn't even care, so they buy it. But you know what, what I'm saying is that, that, that you're seeing that, and then maybe even seeing seeing that angry version of yourself, and you're like, geez, that looks quite really angry. And then you might get, it might just happen where you just go, well, it's not even that bad. Why am I yeah. this angry when it's not that bad? And go back to that, that trigger point, mate, all this might not happen in the first go, or mm. you know, might, you might, again, like we said, you have to train at this. And if you do concentrate on your breathing, and like I did try to fire breath in one of your talks as well, too, and it was difficult. It was yeah. really hard to get the rhythm, but you have to keep just practice, yeah. practice, practice. Five days. Practice. Five days yeah. of doing any of this breathing stuff will give you a better, better idea of it. We're not going to say that you're going to go <gasps> float up from a chair. You will. You know. <laughs> you will. Like. But uh, you, you'll notice it's small, but let's go like a tiny bit of improvement uh, and just keep adding that that analogy we used of, of chasing that deer. So you're, it'll, would you, you might make a small improvement, but you see it getting further away from you. But the next time it catches a little bit closer, then it might get further away again. You're going to catch it closer until the certain stage you catch up with it then you're going to get your new goal new what goal i notice goal. a lot with breathing is that we're just going to use this, this, table is, this, this, table. Is, yeah. this is our timeline table people have a goal here and they chase it and they fall away and they chase it and they fall away and then all of a sudden they're here and they go how did i bypass that because you're letting, every time you keep starting you're learning the fundamentals you're building your foundation then when you put a wee bit more focus in which would have been just enough at the start to build the foundation you end up flying because you've got all this ground to to work mm -hmm. off so, so you're in a stronger place you're not trying to learn breathing everything about the breathing you already have some of it because you've been going back to the start you've already practiced if not like you might be terrible at the breathing for ages but you've still been doing five minutes silent by yourself thinking about what whatever it is you're thinking about then all of a sudden you because you don't have to worry about relaxing because you're good at that because of the five minutes the breathing becomes better and you end up skipping a step and you end up like looking back at yeah. your I think that's a good point because what people do let's go to this timing again <laughs> is when they do take that step back they do really hard on themselves mm. and they think it's totally wasted yeah you know oh my god I missed the gym or you, we take breathing we take whatever whatever you, your eating habits you whatever but maybe during that time you learned how to to, to cook a chickpea curry or something really different that you've yeah. never done but that's something learned now. So yeah. when it comes back to right, I'm going to do right. I'll go back to that curry. I'm thinking, oh, that's quite nice again. And then you add another one on. So if you do like, um, I miss I I would miss out a wee bit of me my meditation here for a while when I was away on holidays. I just didn't get into it. I know, I know. I'll be honest. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> but you know, whenever I got back into it, it was it was funny because when I think about when I started, how much I used to just. Like I can actually sit now and the washing machine might be on or I'll have a clock where before I started I had to be in the living room where it was dead quiet. Now I can focus and acknowledge the sound, put it away but just concentrate back on the breath and I actually sometimes have sound as a bit of a challenge um, in the meditation just to go well you know what I'm actually going to not focus on that and if for example it was a washing machine I'd be thinking I wonder what clothes are in there and that's probably done now in like 20 minutes and I'll have to hang all this up. Yeah. Whereas now I go, that noise is there. I focus my breathing and it'll still be there. I'll acknowledge it, but I'll just go back to, to the breath. So um, back to that point is the reason I can do that is because of the practice I put in yeah. so far. You can't even use the noise. Like I might say to myself, like if we're in here and the fridge is going, I might be sitting and I can hear the fridge and then I'll say, it's amazing how every time I hear that fridge it just makes me more relaxed. That's so weird. Yeah, and then the fret then the we'll fall asleep. Becomes, a, <laughs> becomes a nice thing, but you can tune you know, off, and then over time, like sometimes I'll meditate with earplugs on that are amazing, and I can barely hear anything in general. But then I put noise cancellation ear headphones on, where I, I can hear nothing except my own heartbeat, or or like if I move my hand, 
So if you can meditate with noise, when you do get the opportunity to do it with nothing, like it's yeah, so much more intense. So I think I think just playing around with the idea, but just thinking about breathing, like kettle boil the kettle. It takes two minutes to boil the kettle. And most people just stand waiting for the kettle to boil. So take a breath or practice breath holding. Can you hold your breath till the kettle's boiled? It's only two minutes. Like it's <laughs> no. So you can work towards it. Like I, I practiced the Wim Hof method, but before I did that, one of the reasons I was good at the Wim Hof method was I watched. A gently movie, I think it was called Red Dragon years ago. And as part of his training, he used to fill the sink with water and just put his face in the sink and then try to stay there for as long as possible. Him and his son, he used to make his son do it. So I used to do that because I was a bit mental when I started training. Um, but I thought it would be beneficial, and it always was. Anytime I got choked or, or in a full body lock where I couldn't breathe properly, I was very calm because I'm not struggling for breath, I was calm. Calm enough either to tap out because I knew right I need to tap out or calm enough to go right there's a wee bit of wiggle room here I can try to move and try to get out but if you don't focus on your breathing you're not going to be able to get any of this stuff but so the first bit like we're saying is small steps practice just being able to pay attention to your breathing again if you if ever's watching if anyone's watching this and you go and ask anybody that hasn't watched it with you how do you breathe they go uh don't know and then you can go well how are you breathing now? Are you breathing heavy? Are you breathing shallow? Are you breathing what were you breathing? And people go, uh, uh, they go, well, don't people don't have a clue, like they don't know how to really breathe at all. So whenever you you start to focus that and learn that, you can catch your triggers earlier because you can be like, God, I'm breathing very shallow, maybe I'm panicking here, or maybe maybe I'm just hungry, maybe I'm having a sugar crash, who knows? Um so I think if you just focused on relaxation, again, it's why I developed the Qigong series that I developed because it teaches you very, very basic movements and relaxation. Like like you're talking about being hunched over, people being hunched over when they're tired. One of the ones I would teach is the accordion breath. But you're not just doing your hands. So you breathe in as you expand and breathe out as you close. So you can call it big box, little box if you wanted or whatever. So whenever you're doing that, you are opening you're not doing you're not doing that you're opening your chest yeah. so if you think about it <coughs> even if you feel like you can't get a breath and oh, i can't breathe i'm freaking out i can't breathe i can't breathe do this what does that do that opens your chest your chest is like a like a bag so it fills up whenever you open it so it's going to breathe for you yeah and then when you start to visualize and focus then the other one like there's one that, that's this is about relaxing and that's called pain defense it's from karate kid <laughs> you know i had to think in one of my first things of, of hearing about breathing years ago and doing it was something simple as hand in the chest, hand in the tummy. And if you're breathing, your chest is rising here, then you're not actually using all your diaphragm, you're not using the body right. So it's actually breathing through the stomach. So you're actually constantly, just even lying on your bed at night and that could be your first step of actually breathing properly and noticing that and actually just how that feels. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, I think we're we'll gonna have to wrap it up because I have a class too. <laughs> <laughs> just realised the time that we are uh, yeah awesome but look hopefully hopefully there are still is people watching is it or replayers <laughs> or replayers or listening and watching and if you do guys look we we do appreciate the feedback um, we do we do get the odd message we get a lot of people coming and talk to us shout out to, to Mags McCabe um, Go on, Mags. Skellen, who tried our nap uh, but <laughs> her, her Mags didn't set the alarm and she got up like within 40 minutes and she said she's going to volleyball and she was kind of all over the place. Just, I couldn't remember what phase of sleep was in. I was like, 20 minutes or 90 minutes? No. Right. That's two things to remember. But yeah, so thank you very much, guys. Hopefully you took something from that. I know I kind of do. Hopefully Liam kind of learned something from me. But... <laughs> Bubble. Bubble. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. yeah, so thank you from me. Thank you guys. Bye. <laughs> oh, I have to go here. <laughs>